So we're back on the Camels with Hammer show with Jerry DeWitt for just a little bit longer. And while I was at the American Atheist Convention in 2013 here in the spring, I was hanging out with Sylvia Brooks and her husband, Niels, and they were filming a documentary called Hug an Atheist, and they had interviewed me in November in New York City, and, um, but there was audio problems, so they wanted to redo it at the convention, and so I kind of hung out with them, and I tried to hook them up with my friends, and so Jerry was very gracious to, to, uh, to participate in the documentary, too. I was very excited, but then it turns out that uh, Jerry already had a much bigger scale uh, documentary crew around him, and they were already following him everywhere he went, and so I had the I had the charming experience of watching uh, the the Hug an Atheist documentary. Uh, be uh, interviewed Jerry while the outcast of Beauregard Parish right. uh, uh, documentary was filming them. Uh, I like to, to call it the infinite regress of documentaries. Uh, <laughs> Debbie Goddard called it documentary inception. <laughs> and, so, and so that was a blast. That was uh, that was really fun and meta. Um, and so the question is, uh, so so I was just wondering, what is it? What has it been like to be followed around by the documentary film crew? It's uh, it's been exciting. You know, the folks the folks who are doing it are lovely, lovely, lovely human beings. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about their religion or about their background. Once again, that kind of relates back to the pastor side of me and not the evangelist side, and, and we've kind of left that out. But they, they reached out some time ago, and when they first started contacting me, um, I, I honestly kind of ignored it. You know, uh, The book deal had just been made, and I didn't know how much of the story you know, strictly belonged to the book, and, you know, and I just had all these other things going on, and I didn't really take it that seriously, but they kept, they kept trying, kept trying, and eventually I, I gave in and said, look, I'm just going to connect you with my book agent. He knows how the contract works and whether we need to even do any of this, and once he discovered who they were and the works that they had done and how successful they had been, he said, you know, this is upscale. This is big time. This is a really, really, you know, really cool thing. So, um, so, we agree, and all of a sudden, I've got you know, I've got a, a camera crew in my home, you know, uh, pushing furniture around, and you know, lighting. It, it's so funny. I think my son put some pictures out on Facebook, you know, to where here in our living room, all of a sudden, there's all these lights, and there's boom mics, and there's you know, <laughs> there's all of this stuff for all of these, you know, for filming all this stuff, and and that part is exciting, and you feel. You know, you all feel like you're this superstar, you know, because you've got all these cameras and lights in your face. And then they want to follow you into real life. And that part totally stinks. I mean, that part so intimidating, you know, that now you're, you're out like on a street corner, you know, in your town where everybody and their brother is passing by. And there's a film crew and an audio boom. Or just like whenever we went to Harvard to visit with Greg Epstein and the Harvard Humanist. You know, they follow me walking around Harvard, looking at these buildings, and everybody's wondering, who is this crazy person? And they're looking and thinking, has something happened to Kevin Smith? Has he gotten sick? <laughs> I always thought Kevin would have been taller than that. He looks so much taller, you know? But I'm glad he's lost a little weight, you know? I mean, it's, you know, and so all these people, you know, it's just as awkward as anything can be. But at the same time, it's... Um, at the same time, it's very rewarding to know that uh, that this moment, not just for us personally, but for the secular movement, is being captured. You know, uh, mm. they're 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 enthralled by this idea that we're trying to develop the secular ministry, and they're right here in the middle of it. And and if this becomes something, not not me personally, but but if what's going on in the UK grows, if what people are doing in other parts of the country begins to grow, and this becomes influential, then they will have been here. You know, at, at at the very beginning of it. So it's it's marvelous. It's intimidating. It's horrifying. It's uh, it's exciting, though. That's for sure. That's just really great. Yeah. We mentioned Kevin Smith, and uh, Kevin Smith is a uh, known comic book aficionado. <laughs> and and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so he and I were separated at first. <laughs> yeah. So um, so uh, you're a comic book fan. I am. I am a comic book fan, and it's been off and on. You know, uh, obviously, I started as a very young child. I accidentally stole 
a comic book. No one, no one's ever heard this story before. Um, my mother, we had the, we had this little this little grocery store, and anybody from around here will remember it. Almost like a uh, general store at the time, called McKee's Grocery, and that was where I first got introduced to comic books. And so I was I was literally uh, knelt down on the ground. I'm, I don't even know if I was in kindergarten yet. You know, I was that young, but I was knelt down on the ground looking through the comic books. My mother got through shopping. She said, come on, Jerry, and she grabbed me by the shoulder, and out the door we went. We sat down in the car. I'm in the back seat, and I've still got the comic book in my hand, you know? <laughs> so, so, so she freaks out, you know, and she, she marches me back to the door. She says, you have to go in there and turn that comic book back in, you know, like, like I had stole it. So here I am, you know, walking in already as tiny and petite as a person could be and still be alive, you know? And hand that comic book up, you know, to the poor guy, and uh, and it, it was beautiful. It's so the whole thing is so quintessential Southern because if you knew this person, he always had this big uh, cigar in his mouth, you know, and and not smoking it, just chewing on it. And to me, he was the most horrifying person in my world at that moment, you know, handing this stolen comic book back. But I fell in love with it, fell in love with all of the uh, all the heroes, and of course, you know, as I when I turned seventeen and got very, very serious for the next few years. I was very much uh, out of, you know, the comic book world. But I've tried to catch up. I've tried to catch up to a degree. But I, I love superheroes. I've seen every single superhero movie that I can find, you know. It, Who's your favorite hero and what's your favorite superhero movie? You know, I stay mixed. And this is this is going to this is going to show just how, you know, how much of a novice I am. But, but I stay mixed between um, Superman and Batman. I love... You know, I love that dichotomy. I love the whole way DC has rolled it out as, you know, can there really be somebody as good as Superman and all the challenges he faces? And, you know, should Batman go over the edge and actually shoot somebody? You know, mm -hmm. I, I just love that pull back and forth because I, I feel that pull within me. You know, and I think that's part of the human experience, especially within our civilized world of today in this situation. Am I going to be a little bit more like Superman? Or am I going to be a little bit more like Batman, you know? Mm. So, so those those are obviously my favorites. I don't have any, you know, I don't I don't have any independent, um, you know, comic genre heroes that I could really impress the viewing audience with, where they go, <laughs> "Ooh, he knows something," you know. But I, but I love it, and I love all things sci-fi. In all all honesty, when I asked your favorite character, I was like, "Please don't be someone I'd have never heard of." Please don't be someone I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it could be. I don't think it could be. You know, and and what's so strange to me is is like you know I took this big hiatus, you know, and so so you had the X Men, you know, when I was young, and and I had some some old you know X Men back when they you know when uh, Angel was still there, and you know and it you know it's all old stuff. You know, and and I come back, and it's all of a sudden like X Men is all there is in the world. You know, when I first, you know, when I come back during all of this, and I'm like, how did did that little cheesy comic, you know, become, you know, set the bar for all comics, you know, from there on out? So, so I've got to catch up with my Marvel universe a, a whole lot. I'm I'm definitely more familiar with DC, even though I'm very much a, a Spider Man fan. Oh yeah, see, uh, Sp Spider-Man and Batman are where it's at for me. I never resonated with uh, Superman because he was too perfect. Um, yeah. And uh, but then, then there's a lot of Marvel characters I love uh, from the olden days. Uh, when I, I I also collected in high school, and then just been coming back because I gave a talk on philosophy of Batman last summer. Oh, in order really? to do that, I went overboard trying to research. Uh, but, but I barely read any of it, but I bought way too many digital DC comics. You can read them right on the internet now. It's fantastic. Yeah. And, and it, it's beautiful pictures. And and uh, so now I've got all these comics, so since I spent the money, I want to go read them. Yeah. And uh, I just reread The Death in the Family. And oh, yeah. Superman showing up in a Batman comic is about the funniest thing ever because, <laughs> <laughs> because like, he's... Like, like, Batman's world is constrained by reality in a lot of ways. It's supposed right. to be somewhat real, and he's supposed to be constrained right. by, you know, human limitations. Right. And so, so, you, yeah. so he comes in, and, and you see Batman, like, and when you read a lot of Batman, it's Batman coming into rooms and just 
punching people constantly. It's like all he right. does is beat people up. He's almost <laughs> never, he's rarely ever in a fair fight. So right. it's, just, it's just everyone around and right. And then and then he and he goes and he and he punches Superman. And Superman rolls with it to avoid you know so it doesn't hurt Batman. You know, and <laughs> yeah. he's like and he just looks at him. He's like, why'd you do that? And Batman's like. You know, and and then it's so funny because the Joker has to give a, um, a is going to give a speech at the UN, and because because right. for some reason some Arab uh, some some Arabic country has made him their, right. <laughs> their, their ambassador. Ambassador. yeah right. And he releases the gas to turn you know to kill everyone, and right. Superman just ingests all the gas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. He inhales all the gas and flies away, and right. nobody gets hurt. And I was like, well, if we just put Superman on the Joker beat. You know, like, oh, he would have the Joker taken care of in a, in an instant. Yeah, exactly. Like, That's right. That's right. Or, or, or here's the other thing. You know, there's been a couple of times that Superman has had to be in prison. <laughs> you know that the world's turned to get Superman and imprisoned him, and and made handcuffs that he can't escape from, and you know stuff like that. And it's like, why don't you just use that for everybody? <laughs> you know, just just make that make that the standard for Arkham Asylum, and Batman would be able to retire because you know nobody would ever get out again. It's like we know Joker's not an alien from Krypton, but we're just gonna go ahead and put these handcuffs on him anyway. You know, because we're really tired of Batman having to tear up the city, you know. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. The other part that always blows my mind, and they've made jokes of it from time to time, is like, wouldn't you hate to be the mayor, you know, of these cities that these heroes tear to pieces, you know? know. Why does anybody stay in these inner city buildings, you know? <laughs> it's like, golly, you know, rent space for this office is like $35 a month. Why is that? Oh, okay, yeah, the Green Lantern just flew through it, you know. <laughs> I get it. How did that happen? Well, you know, pretty often, <laughs> you know, this big green fist comes through the window and grabs, you know, somebody and throws them out. You're like, well, I understand now, but how's the Internet? Oh, the Internet's great. You know, we've got great Wi-Fi on this building. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. That's and uh, the Incredibles picked that up, right? They went yes. with that. That was they did. They made that was a clever that. way to That's do right. it. They sure did. They sure did. And you know, this is a little off subject with 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 comics, and and I know it's getting late, but yeah. If there was any one thing that I that I've come across recently that is absolutely uh, absurd that I wish was true. It would be ancient aliens. <laughs> I just wish it was true. I do. It just would be so awesome, you know, if we if we could actually, you know, like go into the pyramids, you know, and there, you know, decipher and go. It really is true. There really is life, you know. There there was life somewhere else from another time. That that would be out of out of all things fiction. That's probably what I would want to be true. <laughs> All right, well, we'll end there then, and so on a hopeful note. <laughs> on a hopeful note that there will be aliens, and they will come from Krypton, and they will suck up all of the noxious gas. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jerry, for coming by. I'm so happy we did this. My pleasure. And um, good luck with everything. You need anything, let me know. Thanks a lot, my friend. I really appreciate your great work. Keep it up. Thank you. All good right. Night. Good night.